What is up guys, Coop here, and today uh, we're going to be actually watching a cinematic of Old Soldier. It's a surfing uh, good old cinematic. Uh, it is literally pretty fucking early in the morning. Apparently they dropped it right in the middle of the night, like 11 at night. So uh, yeah, without further ado, roll it. I'm very excited for this because I there's a lot of different opinions I have about Star Thing. Oh shit. The son who died at uh I see. Oh fuck. So it looks like we're gonna get a lot of the answers we wanted. So this is like right before the uh, Siege of Lord run. Which we'll find out actually next week. Is that a daffy oh. boy? Lord Sarfang. That was cool. Dude, there's just so many alliance out there. Holy shit. How many do you think? Too many. Yeah? There was no honor in this. Hell no, there wasn't. They will come for us now. All of them. Father, the Kazi. He fought with you in the Third War. He told me stories. How you could cut down so fucking ten cool, enemies with a single blow. This be my first battle. Oh. <laughs> what should I do? <laughs> to die. It's pretty good advice. Yes. Of course, but if I do fall, may it be with honor in glorious color. There will be no glory today. Ooh. Only pain. Oh, shit. This is going to be a throwback. What are you doing? Claiming what is mine. Alright, that was pretty cool. Wait, is he about to go out there all by himself? Oh shit. No fucking way. dead the horde it's all we have damn so you know me is that it what I've seen what I've done oh 
Give up, boy. Like you? Shit. Like you, man. Uh, looks like the horde's getting ready for war. Oh yeah, that's pretty nice. Live another day. All right, that's pretty cool. I like that. I like that. That was, that was good. Oh shit! Those Palesta towers are so cool. Like they are honestly like one of my favorite things. Without armor. There you go. Keeps it going. Roar. Hell yeah. Alright, that was a cool cinematic altogether, guys. Um I I thought that one was pretty good. Uh, the Horde really needed that one because uh, recently with all the stuff that was coming out, it was kind of looking like the Horde bad guys and they really needed a cinematic that kind of eased the tension and had that quote unquote, you know, honor. Um, but uh, yeah, that was, uh, that was definitely a good one. So some of the things I noticed, obviously this is uh, right after um, ICC, Ice Crown Citadel raid, um, where like his son dies and he has, he goes to the body of his son and everything. So it was cool to see that pendant. Um, that pendant definitely represented a lot. Uh, it represented honor. It represented life. It, it represented the warrior's depth that he was trying to get. Um, you know, you, you see this guy. He's broken down, um, especially after Teldrassil, because that's not like part of his code. He's not part of, you know, this more or less like death of killing without a purpose. So, like you said, it has no honor. Uh, we have this character, which is pretty interesting. Uh, I, I'm pretty sure they chose the shaman just because of the popularity that the good old uh, quote-unquote zappy boy got from the cinematic. Um, so if this is like technically the same character, that's really cool. Um, I, I doubt it is, or I doubt they really care that much about that, but it was still uh, pretty interesting to see that. Uh, a lot of really cool things. Um, I, we did get an answer finally of what happens after Teldrassil and why Sorrow Thing was so okay with it. It turns out he wasn't. And that a few seconds after the camera stopped rolling, um, immediately right after he was talking to her, uh, we get this cool, amazing shot of just all of fucking, like, the Alliance just marching onto the bay and everything. Um, the only critique I have of it is in the actual scenario, there's actually a giant path that's carved right through the middle of the city to where you could actually see it. That there's, like, a path um, compared to here where there's not a path, so... It doesn't really fit with uh, what, what's happening in game, so I'm assuming that this cutscene was made after, well, before it. So, because there sh should be technically like a pathway that was like from the ocean to where we are here, because that that's actually what happened in the uh, line scenario. Um, in Amis, we have uh, Sarafing just taking off all of his gear. He looks like he 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 really just wants to die. Um, I mean, he's lost his son. Uh, he feels like the horde's in the wrong direction. Uh, so that, that's all going to be very important, especially with this character. Um, and one of the things that you guys are going to notice, especially with how uh, quests are done and everything, um, on the Horde side, you guys are going to have a lot of two options when you do your quests. Uh, you're going to have the option that is the Sylvanas and following the Warchief route, and then there's the Survival and like Honor route. And that's going to really come into play later on, I think. Um, it's just weird that Blizzard would do that. So it's very interesting to see where how Blizzard is going to take the two branching routes, because Blizzard doesn't do things like that normally. Uh, sometimes they'll let you do the darker deeds and all that, and it, it seems like a lot of work to have two different animations for every single quest. So when they do that, guys, I think that it might pay off like later on. They might have like a ticker to see how many people choose the honor route and how many cho people choose the war ch uh, chief rel. So that's going to be very interesting to go on, but. Uh, there's a lot of interesting things here. This flashback to uh, him holding his son is pretty interesting. Um, just because, you know, 
Sarfang was kind of like I would say like a background character. He wasn't. He was one that was popular in Warcraft. Uh, you know, you know, one, two, and three. Like it kind of in the background, and he had some major scenes here and there. But to actually see these scenes now um, and on the big screen, it really gives him that character development that he really needed. So, you know, and especially this scene. This scene is very important to him, and it was like a scene that we got a tiny bit while we we're in there. You know, the pendant. Uh, the pendant actually represents a, a few things. It represents life, and it represents what the horde means, and then it also represents uh, honor, and how his son died an honorable death because he died, and then he died again an honorable death. So I thought that was pretty interesting. Uh, you know, and then he wants to go out there, and he's putting the, like these ashes on his face, uh, you know, of tribal tattoos, and he he's ready to go out there. And he's ready to die, and he's ready to fight with all of his heart, with honor, because that is exactly what he wanted as a you know as himself, which is really awesome to see that. Um, but one of the things that's really cool is this you know this guy right here. He he learned the stories from his father who died. Who once again that's like another point of honor. The guy died in honor of a war that was actually worth fighting for, and that's one of the things that Sar things always kind of complaining about is he's he's fighting for a war that's not worth fighting for it makes no sense it's it's a war over resources and it's a war over essentially nothing um the alliance has really no reason to fight and the horde has no reason to fight but it's a war on resources and they're forced to fight similar to how today's real world are kind of uh how our, how our wars are kind of fought nowadays, it seems like it's over resources and there's not really a clear indicator of anything going on at the moment. So. I see. So, obviously he's talking to him and the troll gives him the thing and he's like, choose life. And he gives him the horde symbol which represents, you know, fight with honor, you know, fight for the horde, and fight for another day. And... What I liked about this is it shows that, you know, he's ready to fight. He understands that he wants to fight for what the Horde could be, not what the Horde is now. And how he wants to fight for life and how he wants to, you know, fight for honor and everything. Even though it may not have it at the moment. So, that was pretty interesting to see there. Uh, also, one of the things that's really cool to look at nowadays is the ba Battle for Lordaeron cinematic. Um, especially after... You know the Warbringer Sylvanas cinematic and the uh, this cinematic here, uh, because you actually get to see all these like little minor characters and all these major characters, and you get to see like the motivation for it. So at first I was like, man, why the hell is Anduin on the battlefield? Is he getting forced into it? And he wasn't. He he actually has a reason and conflict of why he's on the battlefield, even though it's out of his element. We have a reason why Sylvanas says for the Horde. It's the first time ever where she's not fully selfish. She knows that she's made mistakes and she knows that this war is going to be her fault. But she's going to fight and protect the Horde as much as possible. So uh, I would definitely highly suggest you guys check out that when you guys are, uh, you know, after you watch these cinematics. Because um, the Battle for Lordaeron cinematic is literally the epilogue of the beginning event of Battle for Azeroth and all those cinematics and all that story meshes in and whatever like all the stuff that happens is very beautifully painted on the screen for when you guys do watch that cinematic so it, the cinematic was definitely a lot deeper than a lot of us thought it was but anyways I thank you guys for watching um there's a lot of like little things I haven't really picked up on on the cinematic but there's probably a, a few more things I probably missed but it is definitely early at night when this is posted, and it, which is kind of crazy. I didn't expect them to drop this at 11 at night, but <laughs> hey, Blizzard's just lucky that they uh, dropped it when I was able to actually be on the page. Um, but anyways, um, give me uh, your opinions down below, like what you guys think uh, the overall all arcing story is. Um, I'm actually curious too for the Horde players, uh, do you guys actually think that Sarfang would make a good war chief? Or are you guys actually cool with Sylvanas? Um, I play the Alliance side personally, so I don't have an opinion when it comes to this. I've never played the Horde once, and I don't really l look at Horde lore much. But I always kind of like those aggressor characters of Sylvanas and things because it really gets that Horde Alliance collision kind of going. I honestly wish that they didn't kill Garrosh because I thought he was kind of a fun character in overall. And in Cataclysm, it seemed like they were trying to redeem him. And then the rest of the expansion, they seemed to be trying to shoot him in the dirt. So... That's one of the things I noticed, especially going forward with that. But 
Anyways, um, I'm just curious um, down below if you, the Horde players that watch this uh, reaction, can you guys comment down below like what type of war chief you guys are actually o okay with? You know, are you guys more about the sorrow thing? Or are you guys more about Sylvanas? Uh, are you guys cool with being the bad guys, or do you guys want yourself to be your own unique faction? You know, who has a different code of honor? I'm very curious about that, and that's very something I want to look into. But anyways, so guys, I want to thank you guys for watching. Be sure to check the link. Uh, in the description down below of a variety of different things be sure to check out the channel and all the different videos they do i do a lot of variety of different videos not just world of warcraft a bunch of other things and a few reactions and things along the way anyways without further ado stay baller my friends i'll see you guys